like to call to order the January 17 meeting of the Goodyear Planning and Zoning Commission and ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let the record show that all members of the commission are present. Also, I'd like to uh, introduce a uh, new member of the planning commission, uh, Mr. Bob Williams, who will be uh, sworn in at the close of this evening's meeting. Mr. Krauss. Chairman, members of the commission, I have a couple of presentations to make. Uh, this is a long time coming, a little late, but the manufacturer was uh, slow on getting our orders processed. But I, if you recall, we did have a, uh, a city center uh, um, plan that was approved in, uh, several months ago, and plaques were distributed to uh, members of the committee, so Sherry Arntaro already has hers. I do have some plaques for the uh, commission, so I want to hand those out to Dave Horseman. Thank you. And Sean. But not least, Carol DeBoer. All right. Also, I have a very special presentation to make. This is uh, Chairman Horseman's uh, last planning commission meeting. He has uh, uh, resigned and uh, moving on to, I guess, other things. So I wanted to uh, make a presentation to him. I, first, I'd like to make some comments. Uh, uh, Chairman Horseman has been on the commission since uh, February 1998, so almost about nine years he's been on the <coughs> commission and as well as serving as chairman a uh, majority of that time. And I've, I want to extend my appreciation to his years of service on the commission. He's been um, a very steady voice for us, and he's uh, provided uh, a lot of good guidance for, for myself and staff, and he's been a voice oftentimes when uh, we needed to have a strong voice. Uh, he's uh, uh, led the charge on a lot of controversial issues, and so we really will miss his leadership. He's provided really excellent leadership to the commission and a very valuable uh, uh, addition to the city of Goodyear. So I, I have this plaque that we presented. I'd like to read it, Certificate of Appreciation awarded to David Horseman in recognition of your years of service and dedication to the Planning and Zoning Commission, February 1998 to January 2007, signed by uh, James M. Cavanaugh, Mayor. So, David, good luck. spirit of the general plan, I have a few brief comments that I wanted to make. Um, actually, that is the general plan. Um, this has been an extraordinary opportunity. Uh, shortly after my wife and I arrived in Goodyear, uh, I met with Mayor Arnold and uh, 
uh, Steve Cleveland, the city manager, said, I want to get involved. Um, it was very shortly thereafter that uh, uh, I got drafted into uh, various things. And uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission is kind of an extension of the 15 years that I spent involved in planning and zoning matters in uh, Fairfax County, Virginia, before we moved here. Um, I can tell you that this is one extraordinary community. Uh, we've got an opportunity here to uh, really be a first-rate community and second to none. And a lot of that has to do with the citizen volunteers. My fellow commissioners, uh, I really appreciate your efforts, your homework, the time that you put in to make sure that the city's interests and the future are uh, well taken care of in terms of our decisions. But more importantly, the city staff that we have uh, seen during my tenure here, and a number of them are not here, uh, but have had a significant impact on uh, the community and the leadership that Harvey has uh, provided to the staff um, is truly exemplary. Uh, planning directors don't have the tenure that Harvey has, and that continuity is critical to the growth of a small community. And we're still a small community compared to where we're going to be. And that continuity is extremely important because the institutional knowledge about the community, about problem parcels, about issues are critical in going forward so that we have an understanding of where we've come from. I can tell you in my experience in Fairfax County, I was constantly at odds with the staff. I can tell you without question that the staff and the commission and the city council have been on the same page. And that's one of the reasons why we've been so successful in moving the city forward and having a real clear vision of where we want to be. And I want to thank each of you. I want to thank members of the commission. And I want to thank the city staff for supporting the commission and my efforts to make this a better community. And with that, we'll move on to the agenda. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission held December 13, 2006. Any comments, additions, deletions, corrections? Mr. DeBroker. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a correction in the consent agenda, <coughs> page 2, item A. <coughs> Commissioner moved to approve, and I'd like to add the words reconsideration of case 06-300-00002, etc. And with that addition, I'd like to also, if there are no further corrections, like to move approval of the minutes of the December meeting. Okay. Any other corrections? Hearing none, Mr. Brokert's <laughs> motion is in order. So I have a second. Second for Mr. Gelser. Any further discussion? All those in favor of approval of the minutes as, a, as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. <coughs> Just a comment about public comments. Uh, we'd ask you the, to, to fill out a 3 by 5 card if you would like to uh, to get called on for uh, an agenda item. That doesn't mean you're precluded from speaking if uh, you desire after you hear the discussion uh, from the commission or other uh, folks that are commenting, including the, uh, the applicant. Um, disclosure of ex parte communications. Is there any? I spoke this to, uh, this afternoon, I spoke to Dustin Jones regarding the Centera. Yes, the Centera. Okay. Any other 
ex parte communications. Mr. Gelzer and I met with uh, Mr. Jones and the, the uh, applicant uh, on the Sentara project uh, regarding revisions to, to their plan that will be uh, presented to us this evening. Any other? Chairman uh, yes, I uh, received a phone call from uh, Dustin Jones requesting that I uh, be in favor of all of his uh, requests from this day forward. From this day forward? So noted. Okay. There's a single item on the consent agenda. It's case 06-700-00001, 207th Avenue and Pecos, general plan amendment. Public hearing to consider a request for a major amendment to the general plan of the city of Goodyear to facilitate future zoning and development of approximately 2,554 acres generally located at the southwest corner of 207th Avenue and Pecos Road and extending approximately <laughs> one mile to the west of 207th Avenue alignment from Pecos Road to Riggs Road in the Rainbow Valley area. The applicant is Earl Curley and Lagarde on behalf of McRae Holdings, and the staff is recommending that the commission continue the public hearing to our March 21st, 2007 meeting. That's a single item on the consent agenda. Do I have any Commissioner that would like to remove that from the uh, agenda. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to remove that from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. So move, Mr. Chair, to approve the consent <coughs> agenda as uh, noted March 17, I believe. March 21. 21. <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, 2007. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second for Mr. Lux. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, our first case under old business is case 06-700-00005, Australia Mountain Ranch General Plan Amendment. Public hearing to consider a request for a major amendment to the general plan of the city of Goodyear to amend the general plan's roadway functional classification plan to revise the arterial roadway network within and adjacent to Australia Mountain Ranch to facilitate future zoning and development. The proposed amendment affects approximately 242 acres of proposed roadway alignments located between Ray Road and, Ray Road and Patterson Road. The applicant is Ed Bull of Birch and Crocciolo on behalf of Newland Communities. And Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission, before we get into the next five items, this one and the next four after that, I want to give you a little bit of overview relative to the general plan amendments. Uh, I'm not going to do too much because you've seen these uh, three or four times previously. But relative to the reason why this item was continued previously by the commission, as you know, staff contracted with RBF Consulting to conduct a South Goodyear circulation study uh, to assist in, in evaluation of the individual street alignments within the general plan amendments uh, and the 30, Loop 303 alignment that were proposed, and to walk, work cooperatively with the applicants and other interested parties in the area in developing an overall plan. A draft plan was initially uh, developed uh, by RBF. A uh, number of meetings were held with the general plan applicants as well as other interested parties in the area. To, at your last meeting on no, November 29th, you continued the general plan items until this meeting, uh, pending the completion of that study. Uh, we went through a process of receiving comments from the applicants and other parties, revisions to the plan, numerous meetings with the uh, interested uh, property owners and applicants. The final circulation plan, which we included in your packet, placket, packet, excuse me, and I'm showing here, was prepared uh, by <coughs> RBF uh, January. Uh, this final circulation plan resulted in the need for adjustments by some of the applicants in the land use arrangements proposed within their individual applications, as well as their street alignment proposed in the general plan amendments. We believe that this has been an overall good collaborative process with all the interested parties, and we believe that for the most part, 
that all of the previous issues and concerns have been resolved with a couple of minor exceptions. Staff would like to thank Kevin Kugler and Dave Sabres from RBF for their work, <coughs> great work in this process and working with staff and the applicants in the development of the plan. I do want to state that relative to the, to the few minor exceptions that I noted, a couple of the applicants have expressed concern and other interest parties have expressed concern that the, the street alignments and the street classifications reflected on this circulation plan or in their own GPAs that, as they've modified them to be in conformance with this plan uh, can never be devi deviated from or otherwise modified in any manner. This South Goodyear planning area circulation plan prepared by RBF on RBF <coughs> is a transportation framework study to define the, pr the primary street circulation continuity and connectivity within the area. The circulation plan is a, is a planning level study that was also needed to assist us in providing uh, coordination among the different applications. The primary street alignments and classifications identified on the South Circulation uh, Plan are not intended to define absolute or specific street alignments or final classifications for the streets included in the plan. At the time of property zoning and redevelopment, as elements such as topography, drainage, adjacent land ownership and other factors uh, may suggest some <coughs> modifications or adjustments to those alignments and those classifications, those would be considered uh, and implemented and would not be require a, a major amendment or a minor amendment to the general plan at that time, as long as they were within the context of the framework. Basically what I'm saying is this is a general plan level study and to give the applicant's level of comfort is, is that it doesn't close a book uh, on adjustments and fine-tuning of that, including changes of classifications of our work, if they make sense in the future in consideration of the overall study. So with that being said, I just wanted to set the stage a little bit relative to the five general plan applications, and planning staff will go through them one by one, give you a brief, brief uh, description of the revised plans as presented by the applicants, and then have you conduct the hearings and take action on each one individually. Thank you. Mr. Tavasoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission and the public. Uh, Bob set the stage pretty well for me here, and so I'm going to avoid any uh, redundancy because uh, the general plan amendment proposed by Astoria Mountain Ranch is based off of the circulation study, and in fact, this is the, the latest one. Um, it was revised within the last uh, couple weeks, and like I said, it's, it's based from the study that uh, Bob uh, put on the overhead for you. Again, the primary focus, as I've mentioned before, let me back up real quick and just mention the parameters. Narrowmore Road is the uh, roughly the boundary to the north um, within this particular scope that Astoria Mountain Ranch is proposing this GPA for. And Patterson Road to the south, Tuthill Road to the uh, west, which is roughly about 203rd, 207th Avenue, somewhere around there, and 139th Avenue to the east. So that just kind of creates the parameters for you within this 20,000 acre or so scope of Australia Mountain Ranch. But the primary focus of the, uh, the general plan amendment, of course, is to the circulation element, particularly the uh, Loop 303 free freeway alignment, where it's, it's taking kind of a southeasterly uh, direction, kind of following parallel with uh, Waterman Wash in many ways. And there are eight freeway interchanges proposed. Uh, along that where it would be interchanging with a number of uh, other arterials, which is really the, I guess you could say, the secondary focus of this general plan amendment. There were some realignments that are proposed, uh, particularly Cotton Lane and Australia Parkway, which basically serve the heart of uh, the Australia Mountain Ranch planning area, and also some uh, realignments to many of the east-west arterials, uh, particularly, I uh, should mention, uh, uh, Riggs Road and uh, Queen Creek Road to the further to the north, and uh, Willis Road as well, which uh, a portion of which was formerly the Cotton Lane alignment. So, with that, I will say that uh, the amendment that is being proposed is generally consistent with the goals, policies, and objectives in the uh, circulation element of the general plan, and therefore staff is recommending approval. And with that, I'll, I'll close my comments. Thank you. Questions of staff on the, this amendment? Mr. Gelser. 
Um, Marha, this might really be a question for Kevin Kugler. Um, could you explain why certain parts of the 303 are considered freeway with a frontage road versus other parts that are just freeway? Or is designated? I believe David Sabers from RBF uh, can address that question more articulately. Chairman, members of the commission, my name is David Sabers. I work for RBF Consulting, 16605 North 28th Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, there's a, a couple good reasons why we, we suggested there would be a frontage road along this portion of the roadway, uh, along the 303. And the primary reason is the spacing of the interchanges does not allow us to have an interchange at Rainbow Valley Road, which is a key north-south road. Um, serving this region and so by the, the addition of the frontage roads we can pro provide a connection there that, that connects that. We also, um, I believe it's uh, Germain Road is also um, on similar to that alignment so we don't get that piece of Germain Road so the frontage road again picks up some of the, the continuity that an arterial along that stretch would provide. When um, in our discussions with the Stray Mountain Ranch on this, they, their next step will be to go into a land use planning exercise. And they had identified that as a higher intensity corridor, kind of a, a city center, so to speak. So the frontage road would also provide some direct access, <coughs> excuse me, to properties along that that would, um, you know, be able to connect to that. So there was a lot of reasons. You know, that's the primary ones. Could you also comment on the southern portion where there is a, you know, you have a, a frontage road between, um, I can't even, I think it's between, it's way down there in the south end where, I think in the state land area. Uh, that's correct. That is um, actually out of the Sonoran Valley GPA, the northern portion of that. It wasn't really within the realm of, of this study, but we included that because of just the connectivity between the northern portion of the Sonoran Valley and the, the southern portion of the, the uh, Goodyear, of the South Goodyear planning area. And that also is, is identified as a higher intensity commercial employment um, corridor. So f for the same reasons, just the connectivity, the um, access to the adjacent parcels that, that we felt that that would, would improve circulation within that area. Um, that area is challenged a little bit running parallel to a, a branch of the Waterman Wash. So there's not a lot of access out of that area to the west. Okay, last question. If you go back to the other, um, the January 8th revised plan, this one. Okay. Um, the red banana that's kind of running to the west of Australia Mountain Ranch, is that just, is that still a planning corridor or has anything been definitive? On, on that area, in other words, north of Pecos Road, where the where the on on this on this map, yes, sir. Um, it is still a planning corridor, as, as Bob eloquently addressed. This is a, a planning level type of study, um, basically putting lines on a map for route connectivity and continuity. So at this point, that is identifying is a potential route where the 303 could go. It is in by no means a final alignment study. It's no means, you know, final grade, final so, anything. So in essence, in the future, we're going to have to tie this southern portion of the 303 with the with this middle portion of the 303 south of the river to the Pecos Road um, alignment as, as basically we're going to have to find a harder um, path for that road. Um, sometime in the future, is that correct? Correct. At some point in time, a final alignment study will be done, hopefully encompassing the entire route. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Other questions of staff? Ms. Laura Um Yeah, I actually question <coughs> why you're here. Um, seeing how, shall I say, not so quickly ADOT builds freeways in this valley to keep up with the growth and that we're already seeing development and in the southern part and people want to develop in that area and I'm assuming that that'll go before the 303 will ever get built. Do you believe the roads that are in there in this planning corridor could handle the traffic from the people and, and the development that would be in there believing that the 303 will be 
later rather than sooner, shall I say. Uh, w one of the challenges that we had with, with this study was the timing of, of things, and we simply don't know when all the different pieces of the puzzle come into place. But one of the items is exactly what you, what you suggest. We looked at if the 303 were not in here, developing a parallel arterial system to that so that we could still maintain some level of traffic flow in the area until the 303 were built. So it, you can look especially um, in the southern area, we've got roads along the Litchfield Avenue alignment, we've got um, you know the roads to the south of that, so we tr tried to build a system that, that would work. Um, Absent the 303. And, yeah, <laughs> obviously I, it would be a professional opinion that not everything in that area would be built without the 303. The 303 would be an integral part to a final solution, uh, but not, wouldn't necessarily be, need, be needed right away. But this wouldn't create like an Awatuki problem or anything if it took a while for the 303 to get built, where we just have one way in, one or two ways out. I, I guess that would depend on the level of development that went in, if, if it got um, ahead of itself. One of the, the opportunities that we were hoping to address in the, the Sonoran Valley GPA was the potential to make connections to State Route 238 and, and other roads to the south so that we would create other ways to, to provide access to this southern area and not everything would have to go to the north. Other questions of staff or other consultants? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Bull. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ed Bull, 70T Stiles, for representing the applicants. We appreciate all the work that goes into this. I don't think you want us to repeat things that we've said at prior hearings. Uh, we appreciate staff and RBF's recommendation. We're very comfortable with it. We would recommend, request your commission's recommendation in accordance with staff's report. If you need a more detailed presentation, I'll give it. Otherwise, if you're comfortable, so are we. Thank you. Questions of Mr. Bull. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Gilbert. Paul Gilbert, 4800 North Scottsdale Road. Um, I filled out the card before I had an opportunity to hear the very eloquent and insightful prefatory remarks by uh, Mr. Coons with regard to the location of the freeway which we're in full accord. We have no problems with the land uses on this plan. We have a couple of minor things left to work out uh, between uh, my client, William Lyons, and Mr. Uh, Curley's client, uh, Triple Siete, on the location of the freeway, but that's a, a, a discussion a reserved for a later day, as I understand it, and we're perfectly happy with that. And with that, I have nothing further to add. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to address the Commission on this case? If not, I'll close the public hearing and ask for consideration by the Commission. Mr. Commissioner, I move that we approve, excuse my voice, um, case number 0670000005 um, as recommended per staff. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Osborne. Any further discussion on the motion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. Our next case is case 06-700-00002, South Goodyear General Plan Amendment Public Hearing to consider a request for the major amendment to the general plan of the City of Goodyear to facilitate future zoning and development of approximately 867 acres of land containing three separate parcel groupings, which are as follows, 78 acres at the northeast corner of Chandler Heights Road and Sandia Road, 554 acres east of Rainbow Valley Road between Chandler Heights Road and Ocotillo Road, and 235 acres at the northwest corner of 155th Avenue and Riggs Road. The applicant is Michael Curley of Earl Curley and Lagarde on behalf of Ron McRae. Okay. The Open applicant has hearing. submitted um, updated land use plans for the three parcel groupings. Parcel B, 78 acres to 
low moderate density residential um, this one has actually not been changed throughout the process so you've seen this one before parcel grouping D 554 acres um, the land use acreage has not changed um, but they have rearranged the land uses to fit with the circulation plan Chandler Heights Road is proposed to be a collector that an arterial excuse me that will connect with loop 303 and they've put the commercial and higher density residentials at the intersections of the arterials that meet at Chandler Heights Road and Rainbow Valley Road parcel grouping E again the land use acreage has not changed on this they've just rearranged the acreage to fit with the circulation plan um, Riggs Road is a proposed arterial and a collector which will again go north and um, connect to loop 303 has been added and the commercial and higher density residential has been put at that intersection these land use plans are consistent with the South Goodyear circulation plan and staff recommends <laughs> approval of the amendment I can answer any questions if you have any thank you any questions of staff Mr. Curley. Thank you, Katie. Right, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, for your record, my name is Michael Curley. My address is 3101 North Central Avenue. Um, before the Commission meeting began, Mr. Horseman very subtly uh, indicated to me that my chances for success in these cases and a couple after are directly proportional to the brevity of my presentation, so I'm going to be very, very. Uh, <laughs> Um, in the spirit of Ed's comments, uh, I want to compliment staff and RBF. They were very, uh, very uh, giving in their time. We spent a lot of time with staff when we were framing our applications. Uh, at the first meeting at the Planning and Zoning Commission, I gave fairly, a fairly detailed rationale as to justification for some of the land uses. If you want, I'll be glad to go into it again, but I think maybe I'll just answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Curley. Questions of the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on this case? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for commission action. Chairman Horseman, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we approve case 06-700-00002, uh, request for major plan amendment for the Goodyear General Plan. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second for Mr. Gelser. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Our next case is case 05-700-00001, Rainbow Valley General Plan Amendment. Public hearing to consider a request for a major amendment to the general plan of the city of Goodyear to facilitate future zoning and development of approximately 999 acres generally located at the southwest corner of Rainbow Valley Road, 179th Avenue, and Willis Road in the Rainbow Valley area. The applicant is Michael Curley of Earl Curley and the Guard on behalf of Triple Siete LLC. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Amasola. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. <clears throat> uh, again, real quick, the parameters of Queen Creek Road defining the southern boundary, uh, Willis Road to the north, Rainbow Valley Road to the uh, east, and 187th Avenue alignment to the uh, to the west, and that sets the parameters for the 999 acres uh, of the subject property here. The uh, the applicant has not made any changes since this was uh, submitted uh, earlier this year. Uh, I will just mention a few review points here. Uh, previously, the density within these parameters were proposed at uh, 2.16 uh, dwelling units to the acre. With this general plan amendment request, uh, that, that density will be increased to about uh, 3.17 dwelling units to the acre. And some, uh, I should mention that some medium density residential has been introduced to the site, uh, primarily to the north, uh, over by the Loop 303 alignment that is uh, consistent with the uh, circulation framework that was presented earlier. So uh, we're looking at a 3,167 projected number of units 
and i should also note that we're also looking at about fifty five acres of commercial within this area and about hundred fifty hundred fifty five acres of dedicated open space the the goals that were stated in the g p a are consistent with the land use element in the goals policy and objectives are listed there and for that reason we are recommending approval thank you questions of staff miss as well you just stated that it's fifty five acres of commercial it looks like that's fairly close to what it was previously is that correct or do you know what it was previously uh... mr chairman commissioner osborne uh... actually quite frankly uh... previously it was about a hundred and thirteen point nine acres so i mean typically in a general plan the loss of commercial employment's not favorable so um, i understand the change of the three oh three kind of kind of changes that in the overall picture um, of this area losing that acreage of commercial is that a true detriment or is this still uh, quite frankly uh, uh, mr chairman commissioner osborne uh, given that there are a number of other rezonings that uh, that are introduced uh, for a lot of uh, very high density or excuse me very low density zoning districts uh, you know further north of this area i think it's kind of offset so i think there's a pretty healthy balance with, with this Thank you. other questions of staff Thank you, Mr. Tavisso. Mr. Curley. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, again, Mike Curley, 3101 North Central. Just two quick comments. One, um, as you recall, at the last planning commission meeting, as Mr. Gilbert had indicated, uh, both of our clients own property in this general area. There were some slight differences regarding the alignment. We both agreed, and we agree with Bob's comments that the alignment as depicted on the general plan is a general depiction. And, the details that will be worked out later, so I want to go on record as echoing Bob's and, and, um, and Paul's comments. And then secondly, Ms. Osborne, regarding the amount of commercial, we plan, we're long-term holders, and as the alignment um, of the 303 becomes more refined as it comes into our area, we, we plan on re-looking at the area to see whether or not maybe more commercial might be appropriate there. Uh, right now, the, the old general plan had a significant amount of retail that was located at the southern end of the property, which probably was in excess of what um, the area could probably support. This is the area right here, which was designated commercial. Um, two things you'll notice. One is that uh, in terms of the east-west connector, um, Queen Creek is not going to go through over the wash, and so having this located at an arterial intersection, this was not really going to be an arter true arterial intersection, and plus there was going to be limited access off the old 303 alignment. So this probably, this area here was probably, I think staff agrees, was in excess of what this area would, would support. But again, I want to go on record as, as saying we obviously have a vested interest in trying to preserve more commercial to the extent that it's viable. Thank you. Questions of Mr. Cole? Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Is there anyone out in the audience that would like to speak to this case? It's you, Julian. Now I'll close the public hearing and ask for a commission action. I move that we recommend approval of case number 05-700-00-00001. The request from Triple Siete for a major amendment to the original plan. Uh, with the, um, uh, according to the staff report. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. DeBroker. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. <laughs> Next case is case 06-700-00003, Perryville and Ocotillo General Plan Amendment public hearing to consider a request for a major amendment to the general plan of the city of Goodyear to facilitate future zoning and development of approximately 1,400 acres generally located west of Perryville Road alignment and south of the Ocotillo Road alignment in the Rainbow Valley area. The applicant is Earl Curley and the guard on behalf of McRae Holdings. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. 
as noted in the staff report, the final draft of the South Goodyear Planning Area Circulation Plan recommends locating the rights of way for all arterials that run through and adjacent to the Perryville and Acatillo general plan, plan amendment area along the existing section lines. As such, the applicant has revised the circulation plan to reflect this recommendation and has shifted the proposed land uses accordingly. And you can see that change by looking at these two exhibits. This was the original plan showing an arterial that run through this residential area. And this is the revised plan that shows the arterials aligning with the existing section lines. Even though the street alignments and land use locations have changed, the acreage assigned to each land use remains the same. That is, 612 acres are still proposed for low-density residential, 15 acres are proposed for community commercial, 13 acres are proposed for medium high-density residential, and 760 acres are designated with a rural residential land use. Based upon the finding that this request is in conformance with the general plan amendment approval criteria as listed in the staff report, staff recommends approval. This concludes my presentation. Thank you. Questions for staff? Sure, David, did you Mr. say 712 acres? Did I miss, <coughs> did I miss hear you? On, miss, what was that last comment about acreage? Chairman Horseman, uh, Commissioner Bay, the, the last acreage is 760 acres. It's, it doesn't show up on this plan that was prepared by RBF, but it's actually in this area right here, and that remains the same. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions of staff? Mr. Curley? Again, Mr. Chairman, Mike Curley, 3101 North Central. I don't have any comments. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this case? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for commission action. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, move to approve case 06700003, Perry Bell and Ocotillo General Plan Amendment as presented. Thank you. Uh, do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Osborne. Got to spread that business around. <laughs> Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Mr. Chairman, a point of order. Um, Mr. Curley, got a question for you. Because um, I think this is your last case that you're presenting. Is that correct? Do I have the agenda correct? That is correct. Um, I know we gave you a continuance on the 207th and the Pecos Avenue GPA amendment. Um, could I ask a general question? Have you gotten any um, more cooperation from our neighbors to the west to, in resolving some of the issues that you told us about at the last meeting? Yes, Mr. Chairman. We've made some progress. I won't say it's significant progress, but we have some. After the, after the last Planning and Zoning Commission, I actually went out and met with, us, uh, I think, four members um, of the higher, higher up end of the staff, uh, including the planning director. Um, they acknowledge, I think, some of the comments that Harvey had made at the last planning commission. They acknowledge that there is probably a virtual impossibility of the town of Buckeye to serve this area from an infrastructure standpoint, and they agree that, that, that uh, Goodyear is probably the more logical um, uh, provider of the services, and we ought to be in, in Goodyear. They have two or three other issues which they would like to discuss as a package uh, with the city and, and with us. They've asked us to try to facilitate discussions between the city. And so uh, we actually are just going down that road right now. We're trying to set up some meetings between the both, both city staffs to try to incorporate this issue as well as the two or three other issues which they mentioned, which are unrelated to this issue, but which are of mutual interest to both the city. So we have made some, some progress. Thank you. One, one quick comment before you depart. Uh, we appreciate uh, the cooperation of all of the advocates uh, on these general plan amend amendments. Uh, when we first looked at this batch of uh, general plan amendments, uh, I think a number of us felt overwhelmed. Um, I think we've uh, been able to create a situation where 
everybody isn't unhappy. Um, and uh, I, I, I want to uh, commend you among the other uh, representatives uh, of the applicants uh, in working with staff who have put in yeoman work to, uh, to uh, put this together and uh, uh, wanted to extend my appreciation to you and I will to the other uh, representatives of the applicants uh, as well. Thank, Thank you, Dorothy. Uh, one last comment. My, my partner of 23 years, Steve Earle, has admonished me for giving such brief presentations, and I just wanted to point out to him that if he was willing to spend a little more time with staff and working out the differences, his presentations wouldn't have to be as lengthy as their own. <laughs> <laughs> and he's walking out the door. <laughs> Appreciate that levity. Okay. <laughs> okay. If my uh, memory serves me correctly, the next case is case 06-700-00004, Madeira General Plan Amendment, public hearing to consider a request for a major amendment to the pl general plan of the City of Goodyear to facilitate zoning and development of approximately 2,363 acres of land generally located between Chandler Heights Road on the north and Patterson Road on the south, and from one half mile east of Rainbow Valley Road, 179th Avenue on the west, east to one fourth mile west of 155th Avenue alignment on the east. The applicant is Dustin Jones of Snell and Wilmer on behalf of A Red Inc. Mr. French. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Commission members. Uh, again, this subject property, we're bounded by Chandler Heights Road on the north. We've got Waterman Wash on the east. Uh, we go all the way south to Patterson Road. And then on the west, we're basically at the 175th Avenue alignment. Uh, this is the revised uh, land use plan for Madera. It is generally consistent with uh, the circulation plan and with the previous versions of the, the land use plan that you've seen over the last several months. Uh, one exception with uh, in regards to the circulation plan is the Hunt Road alignment. Uh, the circulation plan shows it as an arterial basically from uh, the western boundary to about the Cerebral Road alignment and then a collector from there east to the wash. <coughs> At this point in time with the general plan level of review, uh, staff is recommending that uh, the land use plan uh, reflect the roadway as shown in the circulation plan. Uh, a couple other issues uh, that we'll look at further at a greater <coughs> detail upon development of property would be the disposition of the Waterman Wash, future development of the floodplain, and of course provision of public services to the property. But again, those are items that we'll look at further uh, at the time of development. At this time, staff is recommending approval of the amendment as it meets the general plan approval criteria. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Mr. Gelser. Um, on the legend on this plan, you show um, a wastewater treatment plant, and I kind of looked all through the map, and I couldn't find a wastewater treatment plant on this map, and maybe, you know, I could be misreading it, but I'm trying to figure out. I mean, I know there's a waterman a wastewater treatment plant in the area, and I'm just kind of asking, is it off the map somewhere, or where should it be? Mr. Chairman, Commission members, I'm not sure at this level we would even know. I don't know if the applicant would want to address that further, but that's something. <coughs> Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones. Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Dustin Jones, one Arizona Center, on behalf of Ariad. Um, based on the presentations we've had in the past, we won't go through the full lengthy presentation, um, but to address the comments that have been raised thus far, on a previous uh, draft of our land use plan, uh, the 
wastewater treatment plant was noted here on this spot, and obviously the legend had it on there. Working with staff, staff is in the process of provide, preparing a solution for this general area. We will be most likely tapping into the Rainbow Valley plant that's not on our site anymore, so we wouldn't have a wastewater treatment plant. It would be the solution that the city has, is providing for the general area, so it's off of our site, and we will amend that and take that off the legend as well because it's inconsistent at this time. Yes, yes. Mr. Pohl still here? Or is he? Oh, there he is. Isn't that one of your wastewater treatment plants that you're going to be building through? I don't know if you're talking about the probably so. Okay, that was, that was, that, you're building, there's two in the southern region, this is one of them, right, that we did the donuts around, like about a year ago? Yes. Okay, thank you. Just want, thank you. Any other questions for staff and while the applicant is here? Also just want to thank staff for the time and consideration they've given us over the past few months. We, after receiving the circulation plan, had a series of comments and questions that we made to the plan and during the time period in between our hearings we have had an opportunity to meet with them. All of our issues have been resolved. We appreciate staff allowing us to deal with the detail of the arterials or the need for the arterials through our zoning application and thank you for your consideration, staff. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Any other questions of staff for the applicant? Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this case? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a commission action. Chairman Norris would like to move that we approve case 06-700-0004. Request for major amendment to the Goodyear General Plan. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Ms. Laura Tone. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next case is case 06-300-00002, Cobblestone Auto Spa and Market Use Permit. Public hearing to consider a request for a use permit to allow three convenience uses for the Cobblestone Auto Spa and Market, convenience store, gas station, and car wash, and an automotive service station, lube service, on a 2.7 acre parcel in the co Cobblestone Creek. Commercial Center, Palm Valley Phase 8, located in the northwest corner of McDowell Road and Pebble Creek Parkway in the Palm Valley Planned Area Development. The applicant is Paul Gilbert of Bayes Gilbert PLLC. <coughs> Excuse me, PLLC. Mr. Birmingham. Thank you, Chairman Horseman. Members of the Commission, members of the public, um, I've placed the vicinity map just to, to help you to get oriented. Again, this property is located in the northeast corner of, um, excuse me, northwest corner of McDowell Road and Pebble Creek Parkway. It's in phase eight of the Palm Valley Master excuse Plan. Excuse for just one minute. Can we close the door? Okay. Thank you. This application was initially considered by the Planning Commission on October 4th, 2006 under the design that I'm showing on, on Elmo right now in which the parking canopies were located at the immediate corner of Pebble Creek Parkway and McDowell Road. Um, in addition, the bay doors of the lube service building were located uh, facing directly onto Pebble Creek Parkway and, and those were designs that staff had noted was incompatible with the city's design guidelines and also with the zoning ordinance and at that meeting staff recommended denial of the use permit request and the Planning Commission voted 6 to 1 to deny the use permit application. Subsequent to the Planning Commission meeting, the applicant has uh, expressed willingness to revise the site layout in accordance with the city standards. And the applicant has, as you can see with this site plan, the applicant has relocated the main car wash building adjacent to the intersection, uh, giving the building a stronger tie to the intersection. Uh, in addition, the, you can see that the lube service building is, is now in this area, so that it has been uh, relocated and, it, and reoriented uh, so that the bay doors were, um, were not facing directly onto the uh, Pebble Creek Parkway. Rather, they are 
uh, angled to face the intersection. Um, staff is recommending approval subject to the three stipulations in the staff report. And this concludes staff presentation. And we're, staff's available to answer any questions that you might have. Questions of staff? Mr. Gilbert, did you want to speak on this case? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for, your, for your record, uh, my name is Paul Gilbert, 4800 North uh, Scottsdale Road. Um, uh, all I can say is uh, thank you for the principle of repentance. We have uh, made the changes you recommended, and we're here with a strong staff recommendation of approval. Be happy to answer any questions. That you any have. questions for Mr. Gilbert? Is the applicant in the audience? The applicant is in the audience. Welcome to Goodyear. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions for for staff and Mr. Gilbert? Thank you. Just one one quick comment. Uh, this is an example. Um, where the commission and the staff were on the same page, and there are many um, cases where <clears throat> we're entirely consistent. It's unfortunate that sometimes the applicant doesn't always uh, understand that and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing a great car wash on the corner. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this case? A follow-up comment. We appreciate the, uh, the spirit of cooperation and the desire, strong desire for our affirmative uh, uh, imprimatur and uh, we are happy to uh, to have you in Goodyear. Any further discussion? Okay. Close the public hearing and ask for staff reason uh, ask for uh, commission action. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve recommend approval of case 06300000002 cobblestone auto spa and market use special use permit. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second from Mr. DeBroker. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Thank you. Next case is case 06-200-00020, Palm Valley Crossing Planned Area Development PAD Amendment. Public hearing to consider a request for a PAD amendment to Palm Valley Crossing planned area development, generally located on 66 acres east of Litchfield Road, along Auto Drive and Test Drive street frontages, to amend the development standards and clarify, expand, and expand the range of permitted uses. The applicant is Stephen Earl of Earl Curley and Lagarde. Mr. Cannon. Thank you, Chairman Horst and members of the Commission. As shown on the projected map, the existing 192-acre <coughs> Palm Valley Crossing PAD is highlighted in black, and the proposed 66-acre amendment area is highlighted in yellow. The proposed 66-area amendment area is located, or 66-area PAD amendment area is located along the test drive and auto drive street frontages. As noted in the staff report, the existing Palm Valley Crossing PAD was approved in 1995 with zoning for a mixture of retail, automotive, industrial, and entertainment uses. Since 1995, two automotive dealerships, a large shopping center, and numerous retail pad buildings have been constructed. With this PAD amendment request, the applicant is proposing to amend the development standards and the permitted land uses for 66 acres of the Palm Valley Crossing PAD. 
The details pertaining to this request and staff's analysis are, cont analysis are contained in the staff report. The applicant also has a uh, detailed presentation of their request this evening. This concludes my presentation. Uh, staff is available for your questions. Thank you. Any questions of staff at this time? Ms. Osborne. David, do we need to um, add any kind of, I know within the discussion area you had um, have concerns regarding the parking and um, what I really didn't see in here but maybe that's just a given partly is that light lighting ordinance especially with the residential area next to what do you think on that? Chairman Horseman, uh, Commissioner Osborne, if I'm correct are you asking a question regarding Parking or lighting as it relates to parking well, lots or well, parking counts in general and then the lighting? That lighting ordinance that we had, kind of the dark sky area, um, with the resident, <coughs> I just didn't know if we should actually stipulate that in here or leave it be. But the parking, the parking um, you had concerns about, and I just wanted to hear what a little more about what your concern was, I guess. Okay. Chairman Horseman, is something uh, we needed to state or not. Chairman Horseman, Commissioner Osborne, um, in an effort to reduce the amount of stipulations for each of these type of proposals, staff omitted that okay. stipulation training of lighting. It is subject to that stipula or it is subject to the city's lighting ordinance, and if you um, would like to add that stipulation, staff would not object. Okay. That's fine. And in regarding or rather regarding your question on parking, staff had discussions with the applicants uh, specifically regarding uh, how much parking would be appropriate for each parcel as it develops. The situation is that a lot of these parcels develop with speculative tenant space. For instance, you might have one building with space for eight tenants, but none of those tenants are known at the time of the construction and the type of uses are not known. And so there could be a situation where Later in time, as the tenants fill the building, uh, parking is uh, there isn't enough parking for everybody to have their specific uh, use. And it was agreed that if that is the case, I believe that the actual staff report, or rather development guidelines, state that if there's more than two tenant spaces in a single building, the parcel shall be parked at 75% warehouse and 25% office. And that is to prevent a shortage of parking in the future. Okay. Thank you. Other questions of staff? <laughs> Thank you, David. Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Stephen Earl. My address is 3101 North Central in Phoenix. I'm with Earl early in Lagarde. <laughs> uh, I'm here tonight on behalf of Suncor, who is the master developer for uh, Palm Valley Crossing. I think all of you are aware of this project. It's partially developed, the staff has indicated. The parts you see developed are the parts on the frontage. The part that is not developed is the interior parcels, which has not been developed for 10 years. As Suncor began to uh, its long effort to market this property, it was determined that we needed to be a little bit more careful about saying where auto-related uses could be allowed only and, and also expand some of the light industrial to pull in some service commercial. All of us understand that normal retail needs exposure on the arterial, so we were not after normal retail uses. We were after more of the upholstery shop or the carpet or lighting or those kind of things that are destination. A person is going to a particular address and can therefore go into an interior location like this and find the, uh, the use and does not depend upon uh, arterial visibility. And that's really the intent behind this. Uh, it was continued, as you noticed on your calendar, and the reason for that was we held two neighborhood meetings. Uh, we had to deal with both the existing tenants of this project as well as the residential neighbors to the east, and both had uh, uh, concerns. The neighbors to the east were particularly concerned about buffering, so that whatever uses occurred on the other side of the wall would, would be uh, not adverse to them. 
So you'll notice in your report that we agreed to create a, a landscape buffer outside of the wall, then build an eight-foot wall, no access to Central Avenue, so that there would not be an increase of traffic in the neighborhood. The eight-foot wall would protect the neighborhood from uh, you know, noise associated with it. And then the one lot, which is in the corner next to the neighborhood, which is this lot six, um, is the only portion of our application adjacent to the neighborhood. And there they wanted to per particularly restrict uses that would have noise, potential noise associated with them. And so we took out uses there. And you notice in your staff report that there's a whole list of uses permitted elsewhere that are not permitted on lot six, such as auto-related uses or anything regarding repair. Um, and that seemed to satisfy the residents to the east. The automobile dealerships that you see out there today uh, were particularly concerned about keeping an auto-related element in the northern portion. Now, originally, when this, when this master plan was approved 10 years ago, while auto uses were permitted here, they were not restricted. The, the dealers were particularly concerned about making sure that at least the northern portion, because this particular lot here is owned by the Grubb family, we want to make sure that we restricted it. We agreed with that. And so you'll notice in your application that those are only ARC uses, auto-related uses. Now, we did add auto-related uses around in the other area because, candidly, if we can attract more auto-related uses, that's a good thing. Uh, but so far, given what's happened along I-10 to the east of this, our, our field of auto-related uses has been restricted. So that's why we've added RNC down here where it was, no, was not originally permitted in the light industrial area, and we've also added some service-related uses uh, and then restricted the uses on parcel six. We believe that we have addressed the concerns raised by the neighborhood, uh, both in, in our area, in our business park, as well as uh, in the residential area. Uh, and so we're in agreement with the stipulations. We, we would comment, if we might, about stipulations. Uh, uh, I think it's 11, excuse me, 13, 12 and 13. And being told by that we don't need to worry about that. These 12 and 13 to deal with your, um, your, your typical noise uh, associated with Luke Air Force Base and, and the um, Goodyear Airport, as well as the freeway. Obviously, in a commercial project like this, there isn't anybody that would be concerned about those things. We did, we did note it on the plat that they are subject to overflights. Uh, staff asked us to not only do that, but to do the typical residential notice. Uh, kind of, we kind of think it's overkill, um, especially on the freeway, which is 13. Uh, that's why we're trying to get them there is because they have exposure to the freeway. And so to also notify them that there's noise associated with the freeway seems overkill. But if the city uh, wants to be very, very careful. I guess we're not going to object. Okay. Question to Ms. Earl. <coughs> Ms. Osborne. Is there any idea? I, I, I think this is uh, great for the dealerships especially. Um, is there any idea, though, as to the percents that would be a warehousing type of element? Uh, Commissioner Osborne, obviously warehousing is a c permitted use in the uh, today. Um, it's always been permitted. For the last 10 years, it's been permitted. And notwithstanding that, we've had very little uh, interest in, in the typical warehouse. Uh, it's not to say that we won't get some, but we uh, Suncor does not anticipate significant portion of this project being that. That's why we're expanding it to the more service commercial. Thank you. Other questions? Mr. Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak on this case? I have a, a couple of comments. I think this is a, a, a great compromise in the sense that uh, it expands the uses internal to this uh, PAD while preserving the uh, parcel zone with freeway frontage for development as automobile dealerships. Um, the uh, dealerships to our east are primarily um, 
a tier of, of uh, product that uh, is entry to mid-level and uh, there are a lot of folks in this area that are driving um, more uh, expensive automobiles that have to drive to Phoenix and Scottsdale to get serviced and uh, I'm not sure whether it's more rooftops uh, I think the income levels are here but whether it's rooftops or, or uh, other development that uh, supports their uh, efforts um, I think these uh, freeway facing parcels are crying out for premium dealerships and I, I guess we're all struggling as to how to how to get that make that happen and I see TA <laughs> He's the he's the point man for for a Suncor on that, and uh, my hope is that this will um, not only generate activity, but will begin to become a catalyst for those premium dealerships. And I'm sure that the existing dealerships would like to have some company uh, in that area. <coughs> I think this is a. a, a very worthwhile endeavor in terms of uh, modifying the uses that are uh, permitted in that area. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this case? Last call. Okay. Close the public hearing and ask for a commission action. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move, uh, recommend approval of case 06 200 Palm Valley Crossing planned area development path with the 16. Uh, if you like. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Our next case is case 06-600-00012 and 06-600-00013 Centera 1 and 2 site plan, a request for the approval of a site plan for Centera 1 and 2 mixed use parcels generally located on 18.51 acres on, and on 14.92 acres on the east side of Estrella Parkway, north of Yuma Road. The applicant is Dustin Jones of Snell and Wilmer, LLP. Mr. Canning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. As you already know, the applicant initially requested approval of the Centera 1 and 2 site plan at the December 13th, uh, 2006 Planning and Zone Commission meeting. At that meeting, the applicant was, by, was advised to add usable second story loft space above the retail buildings in order to achieve an integrated project. The applicant has responded to your request by proposing two, two loft units at one end of each retail building for a total of six units. The applicant has indicated, has indicated that a good faith effort will be made to market, market these units for residential use with the potential that the units would be utilized for commercial space if there's no demand for second story residential loft living. And I'd like to just briefly show you some exhibits of the revised elevations that indicate the use of the second story space. This is retail <coughs> building number one, which is included in your commission packet. And as you can see, there's second story space right here. I also have exhibits for buildings two and three, which were not included in your packet. This is the usable second story space. Each unit is proposed to contain approximately 700 square feet. And then this is retail build building number three, again with the second story loft unit. This concludes my presentation. Staff is in support of the Centera 1 and 2 site plan. Um, staff's also available for any questions. Thank you. Questions of staff? Thank you. Mr. Jones? Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Dustin Jones, 1 Arizona Center, on behalf of Fairfield Residential and the Centera Project. Uh, back before you again this evening after our continuance at the last hearing, as staff has indicated, um, 
I'd like to note uh, Mr. Canning's use of words that we were advised to uh, add residential uh, units above the, the retail. Uh, I've, I've told others that I don't think it was advised. I think it, we had a coming to Gilzer meeting, uh, as I've told people, <laughs> and we were strongly encouraged uh, to add the, re the residential above the retail. Uh, we appreciate after a year of since we submitted our site plan that after that last meeting we had a very clear, clear direction with respect to what integration means. Um, I, I don't think there was any doubt in our mind after we left the meeting. So we had a meeting with uh, staff and with some of the commissioners. We feel that the project that we are proposing this evening is one that uh, is worthy of a, a vote of support from the entire commission tonight, tonight the unanimous support, uh, working with staff, working with the planning commissioners. We feel like providing the residential above this is going to be something that will be viable, something that the city will, again, as the commissioners have indicated, will jumpstart having a vertical mixed-use type of development within the city of Goodyear and Fairfield, and, and Green Street are happy to bring that to you. And so we would recommend or, or request that you recommend a approval to the city council this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Questions of the applicant? Mr. Chairman, there was a st two stipulations that we had requested modification from. Dave, do you want me to address those? Stip stipulation 13 and stipulation 15 uh, dictate that no medium breaks could occur on Goodyear Boulevard or on Australia Parkway. And discussing with staff, staff is, is pretty firm in determining that, that they don't want to have access there. What we'd like to have added to that stipulation is just wiggle room for staff to allow to allow staff to be able to modify that in the future and not have to come back to council. So we would just add a, a clause at the very end of that, unless deemed or ex acceptable by the city engineer or his designee. Period. And with that, it, the stipulation would remain. But in the future, 10 years from now, it's determined that because this is a retail site or even sooner than that, that an immediate break would be appropriate for the viability of the project. Uh, we would want staff to have the administrative authority to be able to make that decision. If we don't have this language, the stipulation stands, and you have to come back to council and commission just to get a median break. And that hasn't been the pattern here in the city of Goodyear. Staff is able to make those decisions administratively. So adding that clause would be our recommendation. I don't know if Bob has anything you'd like to say. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. That's stipulation 13 and what other? 15. 15. 13 and 15. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this case? <laughs> Chairman, I recommend that we approve cases 06600012 and case number 06600013, Centera 1 and Centera 2 site plan with revised um, stipulations of 13 and 15. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Case 05-500-00002. Palm Place Plaza Preliminary Plat, a request for the approval of the condominium preliminary plat for Palm Place Plaza, subdividing approximately 4.82 acres into seven commercial condominium buildings generally located on the southeast corner of 145th Avenue and McDowell Road within general commercial C2 district. The applicant is Debbie Rowe of DRW Engineering. Mr. Kim. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman and members of the Commission. The applicant is requesting approval of a condominium preliminary plat to subdivide approximately seven acres into four commercial condominium buildings, or rather five acres into four commercial condominium buildings. 
the subject five acre property is located at the southeast corner of 145th Avenue and McDowell Road and is zoned general commercial. The site is bordered by a single family residential to the north, a vacant piece of property owned by McLean to the east, phase two of Palm Place Plaza to the south, and the at home district planned area development to the west. This uh, concludes my presentation. Uh, for the presentation, staff is available for any questions. Thank you. Questions of staff? Uh, Mr. Lux. I just to, was curious, David, if, if we had any idea of what McLean is, is planning for that vacant parcel. Uh, Chairman Horseman, Commissioner Lux, uh, I have not heard about any type of development proposals development proposals for uh, McLean property at this time. Mr. Gillis, could we approach McLean about, I mean, you know, all of a sudden things are happening along this block and that, you know, could I, could I recommend that staff make some kind of approach to them and see what their thoughts are, or at least they can enlighten the city and what they're planning on doing. Um, however, I, I, I have a second, I have a question. Um, if you look at the site plan, um, 145th Avenue is going to continue south, and there's only one cross access point to the in the southeast corner um, to Phase Two. Um, is Phase Two owned by the same developer, and is the plan for more of the same or similar type of of, of development? Because um, my concern is that all of a sudden we'll have, if phase two doesn't happen, we're going to have a, a parcel that has very limited access, even though it's uh, highway frontage. Um, and, and I guess maybe you can't answer that, but maybe the applicant wants to talk about that. Well, Chairman uh, Horst and Commissioner Gelser, it's my understanding that phase two is owned by a different owner. Um, but during the site plan approval process, Phase, they did show uh, the same type of building south of this parcel. Um, I also believe that 145th Avenue will extend all the way down to this portion here, right. like that. Um, and as far as future access, they would have access from 145th Avenue. I, perhaps I didn't understand your question about access. Okay. Well, okay, the, the subject, the blue line on this property the blue line you know directly to the south of this is that that's phase two this and then and then the second or is that all phase two I, I guess I'm, I'm I'm a little mixed up on who owns what piece of property there because there's the blue lines are dividing property and yet you just have this portion that's being developed chairman horseman commissioner Gelzer, it is my understanding that this entire area is phase two Okay, and that's all owned by one, some other party. Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. Other questions of staff on this project? Okay. The applicant like to uh, address the commission? No need? Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address this project? Hearing none, I'll ask for commission action. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, motion to approve case 0550000002, Palm Place Plaza Preliminary Plat, with the, I believe, 11. Stipulations as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a second from Ms. Laura Cohn. <coughs> Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. <coughs> Um, there. I, mean, I got a new mic here. I've been told that I've, they can't hear me on this other mic that was here, so they moved the mic here so everybody can hear me. Um, 
I just uh, last month the mayor and council um, reappointed um, commissioners uh, Joanne Osborne, Sean Lux, and Sherry Laritano. So congratulations on your reappointments. Also, they appointed uh, Robert Williams uh, as um, a commissioner to replace the outgoing uh, chairman Dave Horstman. A um, little bit about um, Bob. He lives in uh, resides in uh, Pebble Creek. Um, he comes with us with a lot of um, good experience he, with the city and in various capacities. He served on several committees. Um, the last one, I believe, the Solid Waste Committee with the recommendation on the recycling. He headed up that and did an excellent job on that uh, particular committee. And uh, prior to that, retiring in Pebble Creek and working for the city on a volunteer basis, he, he, he had 30 years with uh, Ford Motor Company in, in uh, Michigan, I believe. He relocated from Michigan, so he's coming uh, in the state of Michigan, and we're really happy to have him. Um, he, so I think he'll be a great addition to the commission. I look forward to working with him. So, um, so it's time now to administer the oath of loyalty to um, Mr. Williams, and, um, and Joe Brooks is going to do that. I guess. <laughs> the swear against the going to swear and the swearing at you. <laughs> <laughs> Confirm. Yeah. 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 That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. And the Constitution and laws of the state of Arizona. That I will bear proof, faith, and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, whatever. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, whatever. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of planning and zoning commissioner. And that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of planning and zoning commissioner. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So I do affirm. So I do affirm. Okay. Congratulations. Um, my last official duties are to conduct an election of officers for your new year. So in that light, I will entertain nominations for chairman for the Planning Commission beginning with the, your next meeting. I have a nomination for Ms. Osborne as Chair of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Do I have any other nominations? Close the nominations for Chair and ask for a motion to approve the election of Chairman Ms. Osborne. So we would like to uh, move that we approve the... Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ms. Osborne, you get to conduct the election for vice chair. Those are big shoes. I have to fill up Daddy Dave. Let me clear the space here. Ms. Chair, just come that way. We're trying to figure out who made the motion. <laughs> I did. It was me. <laughs> yeah. She motioned herself. Yes. Sherry made the motion, and Gabriel. I seconded. I seconded. Gary seconded. I seconded. Okay, no. so in the absence of me, <laughs> shall we <laughs> shall we go for our uh, vice chairman? Any nominations? I'd like to nominate Carol DeBroker. Okay. 
I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Kelton. I have two nominations. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> That's kind of awkward, isn't it? <laughs> okay. Mr. DeBroker, how do you feel about being the vice chairman? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Geltzer would do an excellent <laughs> job. You're here. And with the fact that the chairman may uh, become a city council person within this year, mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be a good move. And I would move that we uh, cast a unanimous ballot <laughs> for Mr. <laughs> Geltzer as the vice chair. And, would, and, and if that is the case, would you like to be vice vice chair? Vice <laughs> <laughs> chair, would you like to entertain that, yes, Mr. Gelson? Fine with me. Fine with you. Okay. So. Second that motion, then, that Mr. Gelson be elected vice chair. And all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm voting for myself. Opposed? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, review of our rules and procedures. You know, I love to know. <laughs> Would anyone like to uh, make any changes to this? Is there anything that could be added? I know that there has been some discussion about uh, alternates, um, so that uh, we would, the Commission would not uh, be put in a position where it couldn't conduct a meeting and having a, a quorum, and I know that uh, staff has been looking at that, and uh, I don't know whether it's something that Harvey wants to come in on now or continue sure. exploring and uh, uh, come back at the, the next meeting where it's on the agenda for uh, consideration. Um, Madam Chairperson, I guess now. <laughs> uh, 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 the, uh, I did, we did a survey, staff did a survey of all of the uh, communities in Arizona. We did, well, we sent out a um, uh, a request for information through our planning service, in other words, an email service. We received um, responses back from several communities. Um, only t the city of Tempe used alternate members, and they they had difficulties with it, and I can go over some of the issues with that. And then um, another community, I think, well, not community, it was Yavapai County told us that um, their attorney didn't feel that was legal. Um, and then uh, I got some other comments from some other communities, but, but Tempe's experience has been, and I've, I've been thinking about this a little bit and relating it to them, they, they had two members and they had a difficult time to engage those two members and keep them active and informed throughout the year. And they needed to be there all the time to be able to sit in at any given time. So there was some continuity issues they had. So those in, they lost interest, the alternate members, if. If there was if there wasn't opportunities for them to sit in, and they were able to sit in after an item, maybe you know how we continue items from meeting to meeting, so you lose a lot of continuity if you if they're not there all the time. So they found it difficult. So I have I, just a just a thought, and I, I'm not sure how we can what what we'd be expecting these alternates. Basically, we'd be giving them packets. We'd be expecting them to come to all the meetings and be engaged so they can come in and sit in. I, I don't know if it's going to might be difficult to find people to do that. The um, odds of us having another black day not, may not necessarily. Yeah, with the flu hitting three or four of us and a couple of us being out of town. So I, I just, I, that's, a, that's the caution I have. And then I need to check with our city attorney to make sure that we can you can do that. I, I, I assume you could. I don't see why you can't. We'd have to amend our zoning ordinance. But I can continue looking at it. It's something that if, if there is a desire, would we want one member or two members? Two members may be overkill, maybe just one member. Um, yes? Is there any way, since this is on the Internet and televised, if someone were out of town, they could do it by conference and watch? 
I mean, I, I was down with the flu. I was seeing nothing. But if someone was maybe just out of town to make a quorum, would that be acceptable under the rules or not? I know it's acceptable with the council, and it's part of their rules and procedure. We could amend. I could. We could amend our rules to allow that if someone is sick to be able to call in and 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 vote um, and participate in the discussion. So I can. If, if it's not allowed now, we can amend our rules to allow that. That might accomplish the same thing. In an emergency thing. situation, if right. someone was out of town, we could maybe call some up and say, you're on a trip and you're going to be looking on the Internet now and right. see the whole thing. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I, I'll, I'll pursue that in, in lieu of the alternates. It'd be, it be, might be a little more manageable for us. So let me pursue that, and if I need to amend our bylaws, so I'll come back to you with an amendment on that. Good, good idea. Thank you. Do, do we need to put anything in the rules and procedures on um, ex parte communications, or is that just considered an agenda <laughs> item and we will leave it as an agenda item? Um, I, I, I'm just asking now. You know, I'm, I'm I'm very happy with the agenda item as of ex parte communications, and most of the time I'll remember who I talked to. Um, although Chairman Horseman had to remind me that I actually went to a meeting <laughs> which solved some issues. Um, Joe has uh, reminded me, um, because my memory is failing in my age, but, uh, <laughs> that you had previously voted not to amend the the rules of procedures to include it, but we can include it. Well, the, the advantage of including it would be to um, basically codify it for future commissions. And as, if there's staff turnover, people will wonder, well, why are they doing this? We don't have to do this, and they can eliminate it. You know, the, the next commission or staff may say, well, there's nothing in the rules of procedure that require it, so we can just eliminate it. If you want to make sure there's always ex parte communication, we can put that in the bylaws. And well, of course, they can always amend the bylaws. At least there's some, some, some history, some institutional written history of why we do what we do. I, I, in that case, I, I would like to see it okay. added to the rules and regulations so that, um, so that it, it becomes part of the. You know, historic knowledge of the city of Goodyear and the planning commission. Okay, we could, we'll check in both of those, on those two items. Okay. Good. Anything else? Do, do we now adopt these rules and rec and regulations, and then and then, or do we continue them until we? The. Um, I mean, Madam the, two, Chair, the two things that are are up are regarding the. Uh, it, Telecommunication in case of an absence, that and then the ex parte communication, correct? But, no, I'm sure it's, it's just on the agenda for review, so you, no action can be taken unless it's specifically listed on the agenda for action. Um, so it just oh. says review. So I'll need to come back and, and it has to be posted on the agenda to comply with the open meetings law. So you've given me direction, so now I know the next meeting, that's what you'll see. With a, with action for the rules of procedure. Okay. Uh, staff communications. We had our presentation to Mr. Horseman, and I would like to add that uh, in the six years that I've been on this commission, you've been a wealth of knowledge, and um, I couldn't ask for a, a better leader. And. Uh, Thus, always enjoying being your, your right hand man because <laughs> you always have the answers and, and voice them wonderfully. I, I do know that, Ms. Lord, did you want to? Yes, you did. And I'm sure everyone else wants to give kudos. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you for your time and your effort. I, I just don't think people uh, in our neighborhood know how many hours it takes. And, and they see you up here, so they think it's the one evening, but they don't realize all the time you take to read and to meet with developers and other people. And it is a really big personal sacrifice. And one person that has not been mentioned tonight, I'd just like to say your wife, who sits in on every council meeting. And so actually, she's a wealth of information, too. So if it's something he missed, I know she will. So I'd like to applaud both of you. 
Pardon me? Pardon me? I said, I'm sorry. Margaret's our PNZ groupie. <laughs> <laughs> and on behalf, I'm the only council person here tonight. I guess I was the only one that could stay up this late. <laughs> I just want to thank you on behalf of council because it means so much to us. When we get those packages and when I read the packages that are presented to you and then to us, you make our job much easier. And for the most part, I think we've always been in an agreement. There are on occasions we haven't been. But again, really, thank you to all of you, and especially, and you're going to be terribly missed. I thought that when you didn't get to sell your house that maybe you'd just stay on, but <laughs> I guess that didn't work. So anyway, I guess I can uh, tell people now to look at your house. I, 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 I appreciate your kind comments and uh, appreciate having somebody from the council you're quite uh, welcome. take the time to be here. You're well-deserved. Uh, as, as, as a friend, I appreciate that. And and congratulations to the chairman and the vice and the vice vice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Madam Chairman, we do have cake um, after um, after the meeting to um, honor our outgoing chairman. Okay. Thank you. Would anyone else like to? I, I, I would. I, I, I want to thank the former chairman um, for his guidance and his ability to put up with me and some of my stuff. <laughs> Um, but I also want to thank him for going to bat with me a lot of times. There have been a number of meetings where um, somebody, you know, kind of joked about, you know, going to Gelzer or something like that. Well, it's usually been <laughs> Chairman Horseman and I are getting in there and, and digging out the details and making some things happen. And I really appreciate the support. I hate to be the Lone Ranger on that. And I've learned a lot from, from you, so thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to say thank you because I'm kind of newbie here. So thank you for all your help and everything. Good luck. Thank you. Did I get the last word? Um, uh, this is a great group, and uh, everybody works hard and has a different point of view. They're all valid, and uh, I think the one thing that we've been able to maintain, even with uh, differences of opinion, is the collegiality that is absolutely essential in making an organization like this work and I know you've got the best interests of the city in mind and uh, keep doing that I'll be watching okay move, move.